Naruto, 10 Least Sympathetic Characters, Ranked Some Naruto villains redeem themselves or simply follow the wrong path, while others are totally irredeemable. They are villains to the end. The story of Naruto is packed with exciting and dynamic villains, some of which are actually heroes in the end, with the tragic Itachi Uchiha being a good example of this. It's true that this world is based on the endless cycle of hatred and revenge. But some villains broke free of it. Others didn't, and they remained wicked to the end. A number of these villains had a hidden good side or a somewhat sympathetic cause or worldview. While other villains had none, often because of their excessive cruelty, evil goals, lack of a compassionate side, and more. Which Naruto villains are impossible to sympathize with during the course of the story? 10. Fu was nothing more than Danzo's tool. The minor villain known as Fu was hardly the evilest person to ever live, but then again, his role in the story and his personality didn't leave much room for sympathy. Either. It's simply too difficult to relate to a character like Fu on a meaningful level, though he isn't horribly detestable either. Instead, Fu was simply raised to be Danzo Shimura's tool. A quintessential member of the Shady Root organization to enforce Danzo's will. He is almost like a robot in that regard, a shinobi who cares only for the mission. That's cold by Naruto standards. 9. Zaku Abumi was Orochimaru's little test subject. Zaku Abumi was one of the three sound genin sent to the Chunin exams to test the powers of Sasuke Uchiha, though these three are not on the same level as the fearsome sound four. Rather, these three genin were expendable test subjects, Zaku included. Zaku was once a street urchin in the hidden sound village until Orochimaru took him in and granted him new ninjutsu and power. Zaku thanked him by becoming a petty and arrogant bully, and he enjoyed tormenting Team 10 until Sasuke fought back with his curse mark powers. 8. Hanzo once dreamed of peace. The rain village ninja known as Hanzo got rather complacent, and he arrogantly thought that if someone was weaker than him, they would always be weaker. Until Nagato and Yahiko proved otherwise. Hanzo defied the Akatsuki and once offered a kunai knife to them, urging Nagato to use it to end Yahiko's life. Hanzo was a cruel and brutal shinobi who cared mainly about his own image. Though, he did once strive toward world peace, a noble enough goal. In the end, though, he was just a thug, and he would not achieve world peace like this anytime soon. He's not likable on a personal level. Either. 7. Danzo wanted to support the Leaf Village through shady means. On paper, the villain known as Danzo Shimura is somewhat noble, aiming to protect the hidden Leaf Village even if he is not the Hokage or a beloved hero. He was content to be the root of the village as opposed to the leaves in the sun, but he soon got carried away. Danzo formed the root organization to ruthlessly destroy any suspected traitors or rogues in the village. Among other undesirables, and he had a serious hatred for the Uchihas, too, not even wanting them to help defend the village. He also saw his subordinates as tools to be used and discarded as necessary. In the end, hardly anyone was sad to see him perish at the hands of Sasuke Uchiha. 6. Orochimaru sought to learn all ninjutsu in the world. Orochimaru, the snake member of the Sanin, was once a student of Hiruzen Saratobi and a teammate to Lady Tsunade and the Toad Sage. Jiraiya Unlike them, however, Orochimaru put his own needs before the villages, and he crossed all kinds of lines to obtain new ninjutsu and power above all else. This put him at serious odds with his former allies. And Orochimaru is well known for his gruesome and cruel experiments. And, like Danzo, Orochimaru tends to see his followers as pawns to be used and spent as needed, nothing more. He never regretted the loss of a single minion. 5. 
Sesori sought the ultimate puppet collection at the cost of lives. Sesori is another member of the Akatsuki, and he is like a dark and cruel version of Kankuro, himself a puppet jutsu user. Sesori lost his parents to Sakumo Hataki as a boy, and he felt terribly lonely, even with Chio around. He built puppet versions of his parents, but soon got tired of them and moved on to other projects. Sesori became obsessed with puppet jutsu after learning it from Chio, and he became a true villain when he made countless puppets out of real people, including the third Kazakage. By the events of Naruto Shippuden, Sesori was nothing more than a cruel puppet fanatic, even turning himself into a puppet for battle. He never regretted a single thing, even in his dying moments. 4. Kakuzu is an immortal mercenary. Kakuzu is among the most wicked and vicious members of the Akatsuki organization. Even characters like Sasori of the Red Sand and Deidara are noble compared to him and his partner. Haydn. Kakuzu is determined to make as much money as he can and puts everything in terms in profits, savings, deals, and expenses. But Kakuzu isn't exactly planning to donate all that to charity. He acts entirely out of self-interest, seeking immortality by gathering other people's hearts and obtaining new elemental releases from them. He is nothing more than a bloodthirsty, greedy collector, and no one can relate to that or approve of such a worldview. At least all this makes him impressive to watch in a fight, since he has such fascinating techniques. 3. Gato would ruin an entire country out of greed. Gato was a minor villain, and his role in the story had little impact beyond the first story arc. Still, pound for pound, Gato is one of the cruelest and least sympathetic villains in the entire series. Being a self serving businessman who endangered the entire land of waves. Gato was a shipping magnate on the outside, but he was also a drug smuggler, and he felt no remorse about any of it. His monopoly on shipping brought the entire land of waves to ruin, and he wasn't even doing this for some noble cause such as paying for the medical treatment of a sickly child of his or something like that. He thought only of himself. 2. Black Zetsu was Kagaya's minion, nothing more. The character known as Zetsu is actually two beings in one, and the Black Half, or Black Zetsu, is a deceptively complicated and strange one. He is loyal not just to the Akatsuki cause, but ultimately to the Atsutsuki clan, and Kagaya Atsutsuki in particular. Black Zetsu is more of a thing than a person, being the embodiment of Kagaya's will. And no Naruto fan could relate to Black Zetsu on any meaningful level. Even more than root members, Black Zetsu is merely a tool, a means to an end. 1. Haydn was a death-obsessed thug bully. Haydn is easily among the most repulsive villains in all of Naruto, and even among the Akatsuki's members, he was a real piece of work. Haydn belonged to the cult of Jashin, and he used secret techniques to become immortal. Now, he enjoys slaying his enemies with his unusual jutsu. No matter what, Haydn cannot be killed and he will slash himself apart to kill his foes with voodoo-like powers. He is also incredibly disrespectful toward others, even Kakuzu, and had no redeeming qualities of any kind. No viewer could ever connect with Haydn on any level or appreciate his goals or methods at all. <laughs>